Good day to you, it's Marty Westley and uh, I'm very glad that to have you on this journey that we are taking to search for the truth. So I hope that you will be blessed with me. Hello, it's Marty Westley. I'm back again to continue with this lecture of the day of Yahweh. And so the day of Yahweh includes, the, it's the seven year tribulation that I'm speaking about. And the last day, the day before Yom Kippur, will be the Yeshua returning. And then there's going to be a day like never seen before. Joel 3, 2 and 11 to 16 is saying the same thing. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and I will plead with them for my people and for my heritage Israel whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. You know when you look at the nations at that time when the nation was divided we had the whole world rising up against Israel but we didn't know what God was doing. Now remember it says here with them, it says I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and I will plead. That plead is Shaphat. It means to pronounce sentence, to litigate, to punish, to avenge. You know this is with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. People didn't think that they were doing it to Yahweh, that Israel was Yahweh's betrothed. And we today as believers were in that nation of Israel before we were born, chosen by Yahweh because there's no separation between them and Yeshua. And I hope that you have seen all the, the lectures because we have been part of Israel as believers as long as the Torah existed. And Yeshua existed before the foundations of the world. Remember that. It says, Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Neither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full, the vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of Yahweh is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And Yahweh also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. And Yahweh will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Now we'll go to Revelations 12, 14 to 17. And to the woman, which is Israel, were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. So here we have the place prepared for her in Eden. I went to that place. It's an amazing place where they're going to live. And it says here, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. Yeah, you can see it speaks about the armies of the anti-Messiah. After the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. 
And here you can see this is how Yahweh is going to help Israel. There will be armies following her and the earth will open and it will contain all those armies. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of Elohim and have the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeah, you can see plainly that the church has been taken away. Many of church people that have known but did not, was not ready, they have stayed behind. And they could see these things. They will experience all these things. So there are going to be many believers on the earth when the true firstborn church is taken away and have the testimony of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. These are people that know what we know today. They're going to experience it then. And they will be prepared to give their lives to Yahweh. The dragon and the serpent, what we read about here, is father and son. With this earthquake, Yahweh is making an escape route for his people to escape from Jerusalem to Azar. Now before you think it's the Father and the Son, it is not Yeshua or Yahweh. This is the dragon and the serpent that I'm talking about. And the serpent is the dragon's son. Micah 2.12 says, I will surely assemble, O Jacob, all of thee, I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as the sheep of Bozra. Now, Bozra was one of the main cities of Petra. It was part of Petra in Jordan. As the flock in the midst of their fold, they shall make great noise by reason of the multitude of men. Petra can house uh, pl uh, plus minus three million people. They will close up the entrance and when the time is right, the breaker Yeshua will come to release them out of the place of refuge that he, he, he had provided for them. I'll read Micah 2.13. He says, The breaker is come up before them. They have broken up and have passed through the gate and are gone out by it and their king shall pass before them. And Yahweh on the head of them. Breaker is parts. And it means to break out, to burst out, to make a breach and disperse. Revelation 13, 1, 18 says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise out of the sea. The sea is talking here about the nations, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. The beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Remember we read that part where Yahweh's, uh, where Yahweh prophesied about his eyes shall, hands shall be dried up and his eye will not be able to see. This is when he's going to be healed. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, the anti-Messiah. And they worshipped the beast saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war? with him. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. He, he, he couldn't be there if it wasn't given to him. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against Elohim to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Because now the church is already in here. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, which is Israel, 
and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with a sword must be killed with a sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, uh, out of mankind again. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And here we see the false prophet, the counterfeit of the Ruach HaKodesh. And he doeth great wonders, so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceives them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by sword and did live. And he had power to give life. Now this to me was very strange. It's called pneuma, the breath, a spirit, a rational soul, mind, and to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and in their foreheads. This is something that will be in them. Many translations say on and not in, even the New King James Bible, but the Mother Bible has got on. And this even the New King James is in. That no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And here is wisdom. Let him that understandeth count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Six six six. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon. This is Revelation sixteen, thirteen to twenty one. And out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false spirit prophet, like frogs came out, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty, Elohim El Shaddai. Oh. Verse 15 says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Hamageddon, Hamageddon in other words. This valley is the rallying point for all the armies of the nations. It is a valley that will be able to contain all the nations that come. This is a rallying point. I've been there many times. These unclean spirits are the counterfeits of Yahweh the Father, Yeshua the Son, and the Ruach HaKodesh. And here we see the dragon, or Satan, and the anti-Mashiach his son, and the false prophet revealed. Revelation 14, verse 9 to 20 says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Elohim, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels 
and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. And here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Elohim and the faith of Yeshua HaMashiach. Has the Torah been eliminated? No. I said to you before, the church is taken away. The Torah will be written on their hearts and in their minds without the judgments. And if you haven't got it yet, ask, please, ask Yahweh that His Holy Spirit will come and write the Torah on your hearts. There is no time left. We are in the last hour of the sixth millennium. If you want to rule with Yeshua and live with Him in the seventh millennium, there is no time to try and make yourself perfect. Just call on Him. Just ask Him to come and to take you as you are. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in Yahweh from henceforth. Yea, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works to follow them. And I looked and behold a white cloud, and upon the cloud one, one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. What is this that he was reaping? Remember the tares shall be taken away and thrown into the lake of fire first. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle, and another angel came out from the altar which had the power over fire and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of Elohim. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse's bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Was there ever a war like this? No. And Isaiah 63 verse 1, 6 says, Who is this that comes from Edom with dyed garments from Bosra? Remember I said Bosra was a city there of Petra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine vat? I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. And I will stain all my raiment, for the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. Remember that Yeshua, when he got up in the synagogue, and he spoke out of Isaiah 61, 21, where it says, The time of my redeemed is come. Now this is the time that is come for his vengeance. Because he stopped right there before he could speak about the vengeance of Yahweh. Isaiah 34 verse 1 to 10 says, Come near ye nations to hear. Shema means to hear intelligently, to discern. And hearken you people, let the earth hear. And all that is there in the world and all the things that come forth of it. For the indignation, the wrath of Yahweh is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter, 
The slain also shall be cast out, and the stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood, and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down, as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea, which is Jordan, and upon the people of my curse, to judgment. The sword of Yahweh is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness, and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For Yahweh has a sacrifice in Basra, and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea, in Jordan. And the unicorns, the wild bulls, shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made with fatness. For it is the day of Yahweh's vengeance, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the, the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste, and none shall pass through it forevermore. But I think today, we must call it a day, and we will continue with the day of the Lord next time when we get together. It is not very easy for me to do these lectures on the day of Yahweh, but we live during that time where this is what we are experiencing today. We are in the birth pains right now. The time is so short. So I'll see you again next time. And I just say, God bless you. Shalom, shalom. Mari Wesley signing off. Thank you for joining me today on today's journey. Uh, I hope you will join me again next time. So, uh, shalom for today until I see you again.